storytelling also podcasts on great game subjects okay yeah i'm not a markiplier or a pewdiepie (laughs) but hey that's what makes me so unique right 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 hello and welcome everybody to another great collab with me and saint wolven we're gonna get her on the line here in a second and this video is going to be all about Mass Effect 3's ending versus Mass Effect Andromeda. Which one was worse? Uh, This actually, this idea hit me today. I think today or late last night. It hit me like a freight train so hard that I just had to do it with St. Wolven once again. Uh, We did a collab the first time around. Uh, We talked all about Mass Effect. It was the latest Nico Show episode. It was a ton of fun. So let's get her on the line here. And, uh, you know, without further ado... We're going to say hello now. Hello, Saint. Hello, hello. Jesus, now I can hear you. Give me a sec. <laughs> You're okay. I can hear myself too. This is great. <laughs> yeah, I I, tu- I turned off my thing because right. I was trying to <laughs> I was trying to listen to you. I was like, shit, where are we? All right, so welcome, welcome back to the channel of Nico the Legend. How are you? Doing pretty well, enjoying a beer, happily. Yeah, what kind of beer is it? What kind of cerveza are we talking about here? No product uh, placement. <laughs> it's called it's called Boker. It's like the, it's not the cheapest. It's one of the cheap. It's a bit bougie. But it's good. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's not top shelf. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> but it's good enough. Sweet. All right, so. Are you excited to and ready to talk about two very controversial things in the Mass Effect universe? Very, 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 very. Okay, because uh, just just a reminder for everybody, like I, as the title suggests, or states, not suggest, it's going to be all about Mass Effect 3's ending versus Mass Effect Andromeda, which one was worse for you. And yeah, feel free to share any of your experiences with these two instances or games however way you wanted to see it um and i think it's a fair assessment because both were very polarizing to say the least you know and that's just me being really nice on on saying that um of course we'll talk about our personal experiences with these two um instances with the mass effect 3's ending or i'm sure we'll just talk about mass effect trilogy quite a bit but and then we'll get the Mass Effect and drama and see how it went for both of us. And then we'll kind of just do the normal discussion routine. And then we'll kind of see what everybody else is saying. And then there's going to be some comments I'm going to be reading because that uh, one, of, one of the later, or not later, latest Mass Effect videos um, that I did um, that talks about why I'm excited and terrified for the Legendary Edition. A lot of you guys with the comments really were defending Mass Effect 3, and I try to play devil's advocate with this stuff, but um, we're going to be reading some stuff off of that just to kind of bounce and uh, bounce off of it, and it's going to be fun. All right, are you ready to have some fun? Are you ready to see what the uh, how the world's going to burn from this discussion? It's going to be interesting. Yeah, then I just lose like all my 200 followers, just like fucking they just vanish <laughs> out of thin air. I knew it. Oh, God. I knew it. She wouldn't give in. Give in oh, to her Oh, how hate. dare you? Oh, how dare you not like the Mass Effect 3 ending because it was half-assed. Oh, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I'm, I'm waiting for that. Well, I think, just real quick, I think the most um, interesting thing is, is that, um, especially when I talk about the Mass Effect 3 ending, like I, I try to play devil's advocate with a lot of this stuff and, you know, 
from seeing these comments defending the Mass Effect 3 ending, um, a lot of people see it from just that side, and I don't, th I don't, from, from the context I get, I don't think they see it from the other side of why people were so upset. So I'm pretty excited to talk about that and kind of give people the clarity that, um, I'm just going to say it, that they need. So we need that clarity, and yeah, with Mass Effect and Andromeda, there's going to be, hopefully, no transparency issues. Yeah, um, that's true. So, who know? I should have a beer for this. I'm kind of, man, now I just realized I should have a beer and drink with you when it comes to something like this, because this is a big deal. Okay, um, but let's start with our personal experiences um, with the Mass Effect 3's ending and then with Mass Effect Andromeda. Now, usually I'm the lady that goes first, but since you're the guest, it's only nice that the host lets the guest go first. Lovely. Uh, but, but like experience with what, like, uh, with Andromeda or like the end of three. So, uh, let's start with Mass Effect three and, Ooh, Christ. and how you felt, sorry about that noise. Don't worry. There, I don't have any animals. I just throw around in my place. <laughs> um, like throwing around cats. And <laughs> 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 um, so just kind of start with talking about, um, what your experience was with Mass Effect 3's ending, and then, and then go to Mass Effect Andromeda's experience, and then boom. Oof. Uh, Round well, one. Man, man, it's hard because like, there. I think there was so many like feelings, dude. It's the only thing like I don't even cry for movies, like unless a dog dies. You you always cry when a dog dies, but like other than that, like I don't cry for movies, or I'm not like that kind of person that tends to be too emotional. But like when that game ended, I cried so much. I cried like a little child, and the the problem is that on top of the fact that it made me cry, it it made me feel kind of like unsatisfied because I was like, okay, I got I got the ending where Shepard was like, and yeah. that's it. And I was like, dude, you made me go through a hundred percent of galactic readiness. Okay, you made me play your multiplayer. You made me play a bunch of stuff. I played the entire trilogy for you to just give me a breathing scene. Come on. I mean, <laughs> at, at least like, at least like being like reuniting with the, with the love interest, something like that. I think it could have been a little bit more, I don't know, it, it, more gratifying yeah. and to an extent, like the other endings. Yeah. Like I get why they're kind of similar and why you'd be like, mm, yeah, it's not that great. But, like, in general, I think that's the ending that people have most problems with. Like, with the destroy ending. Because that's that's what you were pursuing the rest, you know, the entire trilogy. You were just pursuing to destroy the Reapers. And when you did, you got the most half-assed ending, like, possible. Like, you die. Like, it, it it's not a satisfying ending. Like, to just go through three games for you to just not get your happy ending. That, on top of the fact you spent hours for it, well you just don't get it. You just get like a, you, you're either like a cripple or something like that, or you're dead, which is kind of, I don't know, man. I think it, I think they could have extended, definitely extended like the, the, the destroy ending a lot more. And I think that would fix the game more than editing the other endings. The other endings, like I wouldn't choose them, but when you think about it, it's not that bad, right? Yeah. Like you, like either way, you're deciding that you want to die in a way. So, but, um, and, we're, we're we're talking about with the extended cut. Well, did you did yeah. you did you play the extended cut first, or were you like me when you you got Mass Effect three day one, and then you got to experience the original ending? I then, didn't experience and, the original ending. To okay. be really frank, I got the my my issue. Like I think that's even sad. Like I'm my issues with the extended cut already installed on my console. That I was like, dude, this this ending still sucks. Like what's extended about it? And I don't know how the original ending was. Probably you could tell me more about that because I have no idea. Oh boy, yeah, that's where the uh, that's where the the pitchforks and torches are set of set ablaze. Um, okay, so <laughs> sounds like you want like uh, an extended extended cut, but I think, I, yeah, I think the whole shepherd breathing thing definitely like blue balls a lot of people. Um, for sure, and I think it just set more fuel for the fire. Like, we, okay, I guess I'll just go with my personal experience. So, when I first played Mass Effect Three, I, like I said, I got a day one. I've I've gotten every single Mass Effect day one. Uh, you know, even Andromeda. So, 
when I when I got to the end of yeah when I got to the end of Mass Effect three, um, and did the ending and was experiencing everything because when when you're going through that game through the motions at the end where it becomes the most controversial, as as soon as you get sucked up and you get into the like the citadel and stuff and you talk to the Star Child and all that, you kind of don't know what's going on. There's a lot of like like what the fuck moments it's like whoa who's this kid like what's what's this all about and you know it's like talking to me about all these things that weren't really clarified in the original ending and then you know you have your choices and i i think i think the initial thing was that really ticked a lot of people off is that they narrowed down everything that you did into just three choices and um and bioware usually if we're comparing it to like Dragon Age, like Dragon Age 1, its ending was really good because there were so many different ways to end it. You know, there's multiple ways to execute it. Um, you know, somebody rules Ferelden, right? Some ruler that you decide. You can just decide if you want to spare Loghain and, or see if you make the sacrifice to fight the Archdemon. So there was plenty of cool things like that. Mass, and that, I know that's the first game in the series, but... Mass Effect 3's ending, um, you know, I, I think we mentioned this before, Saint, that each Dragon Age game is, you can take that as its own entity, because they're all so vastly different in how they're played, and, like, it's a different main character. So, um, so if we compare the Mass Effect 3 ending to Dragon Age 1 ending, it's just, like, nine day difference. Because um, people are like, this is a, a sci-fi game, that takes place in the entirety of the galaxy and stuff. And, you know, it's supposed to be this grand scale of a game and all this stuff's happening. And then it, you just summarize it into three options and you're like, what? <laughs> you know, it's very, um, yeah, you feel kind of like dumbfounded. Ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> Ripped off, dumbfounded. So, um, get back to how my experience was. I did the destroy ending because, like you said, it's what we've been trying to do the entire the entirety of the game. This is the whole fucking point why I got here. And then you do the destroy ending, and then a few cutscenes play, and you're just sitting there, just being like, "Okay, I guess I understand what's going on." But they're just not put the. It's like some five year old put in all those editing like cutscenes together at the end, and they just did, they just didn't connect at all. It's an Instagram filter. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I wasn't even mad or happy. I just didn't understand. <laughs> I did. I didn't even. I think I was just so numb to it that I. I couldn't even like freak out properly or nothing. But for those who did freak out or got super upset about it, um, I can only imagine. Uh, and then once the extended cut came out, you know, I got to play it again. I did the ending with the extended cut, and. You know, it helped ease ease the the pain for definitely not all everybody who was who was uh, upset by the original ending, but um, it did it did provide some gratification because it just added yeah. it just added more context, but it didn't really. You're still limited to those three. Well, it's four decisions now because you can just shoot the Star Child with extended cut, but that just gets you the worst ending possible. But you're still so uh, it's so linear. On what you did, um, maybe if if the extended cut came out flat out um, when the game released, I probably would have had a much better time with it. Um, but you, since you got to play the extended cut first, you did you know about people complaining uh, about the ending when you were playing extended cut? No, I actually had no idea. Like my problem, like with Mass Effect, is based solely upon the extended cut because, like. Again, like yeah, it probably it isn't again, it isn't the worst ending in the world. Like it has its its good parts, right? But it's so it's an extended cut that's so not extended, as in like what's extended, like they extended in the part where you don't really need it to be extended. Like I would have been fine with what we talked about the other day that was you know, with for example, my romance was Liara. Like why wouldn't my shepherd be able to like see their Liara if they're alive? Like why does it have to like be left up to chance or li like leave it really ambiguous yeah. ambiguous i don't know how to speak ambiguous yeah 
I don't get why I would have to be that way because at the end of the day, it was the last entry of the trilogy. Like, there's no need to leave it like up in the air. You could just finish things, and that's it. So I never played the original, and I had no idea like why people were so upset because I played. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I played. I was like, crap. I was like 12 when I played that game. 12 or 4, 13 or 14, something like around those lines. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know like it was a whole big deal, whatever, until I got older, and I was like, oh crap. Well, it's not me. I'm not the only one that kind of hated this ending. There's a bunch of people that hated it too. Okay, I'm not yeah. the weird one out. <clears throat> so yeah. Oh God. I, I don't know. I, I I would I would say it would be something along the lines of what you said. Like, yeah, an extended, extended cut. Like, maybe don't change the endings, okay? They could be fine on their own, but, like, make them actually extend them, you know? Actually give them some kind of meaning so that you don't feel that you wasted your time playing this. Yeah. And I don't know if this was, like, a budget thing or something that's that they did real quick. Uh, with the extended cut, it does show you your different party members and what they're doing. But it's not, it's not like the games, the game itself. It's just artwork that's like posted on a screen, and I don't know. It's because they were just like in a hurry to just release that stuff because they did all the other cutscenes of like, you know, people uh, showing your crew mourning for you if you did a destroy ending and stuff. Which I, I like that. I thought that was great, um, and then showing like the the relays being constructed again sh just showing just sh showing a bit more which i thought was cool um and i would say that uh oh god what was the point i was gonna make crap it's all gone i haven't had a beer yet <laughs> <laughs> um oh man i lost my train of thought okay i i'll just go to a different thought and maybe it'll come back to me so <laughs> It's cr it was crazy when, because um, I was really into the internet around that time, of course, you know, so I was able to see what everybody was talking about, and just like Casey Hudson and his team just talking about the ending, like they they seemed like they just didn't have a clue on why people were so upset, like they didn't expect that. But I'm like, I don't know how you don't expect that. You're the director, did like someone just sneak one or take one over your head or something, or sneak on by with it. As like a as a game director, there's, there's there's no humanly possible way that you'd be satisfied with something like that. So, like the internet was just completely on fire because that's just how much Mass Effect meant to people and to just gamers themselves who played it. And you know that that shit just doesn't happen out of the blue. Okay, it's I think this isn't like the time of Twitter where you know people just bitch about everything. Uh, this is like early Twitter and stuff where people are just kind of bitching about everything. <laughs> You know, it was, an, it was an incubated state. But this was, like, solid concerns that people had so bad that you've they had to literally go back and kind of fit in this extra stuff because they were just that many people so mad. I, I can't even imagine all the death threats they got, which you should never do because that's just fucked up. But, you know, people get a little crazy, like with the cyberpunk delay. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. So, yep. um... So with the uh, oh now I remember what I was talking about before. So with those <laughs> with those images that pop up at the end of the extended cut, um, it's it's kind of like a slideshow, and I'm like okay that's that's kind of cool, but you know I, I still wanted that to be, you know animated. I didn't want it to just be concept art. I want to legit like see people having conversations with each other about how they feel about Shepard. You know like some really cool posts like epilogue like an epilogue. Fuck. It didn't even need yeah. an extended cut. It just need an epilogue. Because <laughs> holy balls. Yeah, like, it's a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. Like, it's literally a PowerPoint presentation. So, and, uh, yeah, if you had the, the cut scenes that they added with the extended cut, followed by, like, some really cool epilogue, like they did with Red Dead Redemption 2, um, and it's just you and your crew just having conversations with each other on things that you did and how everybody's doing and feeling, that would have been fine. Like, that would have been perfect. Like, yeah. I, I would have been okay with that. Um, maybe, oh gosh, this Legendary Edition has its work cut out for it. <laughs> but yeah. it would have been just so cool, for example, it's like, hey, you were saying your romance option, right? So you got your best bro, which is always Garrus. I mean, if it's not Garrus, it, okay, maybe Rex You're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're doing it wrong. 
Um, your best bro, Garrus, and then your, your romance, let's just say Liara. Like, if, if they don't have to go so beyond, up and beyond, with everybody talking to each other and stuff. Maybe it's just your people that were, you were the closest with, which would be Garrus and Liara, talking to each other. You're just, you know, talking about the good old days or the good times that you had and kind of talk, it also goes through, like, the journey and the decisions you made. Like, hey, I remember when Shepard... Um, punch that news lady in the face. That was funny. Ha ha ha. Let's have a drink to that. You know, like, like it's like Vikings celebrating the, the death of a, of a hero, right? And they're sharing all these stories. That would have been fucking cool. Um, <clears throat> so that, um, that would have been pretty neat. But originally, um, so your experience with the ending was not so good, even if, even, um, when you played the extended cut first. Mine was, eh, I didn't understand it at first, and then the extended cut, I'm like, okay, I feel a little better. There's still, there's at least some emotion involved, and it, and they actually did some work to make each ending decision different. Like, it's kind of, it's re like I said, it's really weird to hear Shepard with, like, a Reaper filter over his voice if you do the synchronized. Like, that shit's just really strange. <laughs> but you know it just needed to add a little bit more to that like I said like a nice little epilogue um, yeah oh and the oof, the like there's a part of the extended cut other than obviously the powerpoint presentation the part that I didn't like like that much was the fact it was Admiral Hackett like he was the one that was like saying the whole story and all that oh, no one right. cares about Admiral Hackett okay like I don't no, he's an I asshole don't, no one cares about him, dude. Like, he just, like, he randomly appeared, like, like kind of like cameos in the first two games, basically. Yeah. And in the third game, now he's, like, super central, and now we're supposed to give a crap about <laughs> what he thinks. Yeah. Like, I think it would have been nicer, like, even, like, like there, there's little details, you know? Like, like yeah. example, that would be a little detail that would have been nicer if maybe Garrus said it, right? Or yeah, Rex said it. Or Liara. Or Liara. Like your, like your or Ashley. Yeah, whatever. Like, I think that would have been a lot better. Kind of, like, more personal. But, like, Admiral Hackett, no one cares about that. <laughs> you know what? You know what would have been really great? And yeah. I, I, this probably wouldn't make any sense because, spoilers, this person's dead. Captain Anderson. I think Captain Anderson would have been really good, too. Because... Why did he have to die? <laughs> his... I... At least, you know, his, his death was, um, well... His death was pretty, you know, heart wrenching, you know, um, and he was he was a really great character. Um, I think I think he went out in in style, you know. I think he did a good job. I think they were pretty good with that. Now here's another thing. Well, they did put his name on the memorial plaque in on the Normandy, but they kind of you know they just put Shepard's name on there. They probably should have showed Captain Anderson and Shepard being put on there. That would have been a little cooler. Um, mm. But I think it would have been cool if they had Captain Anderson, like, talking, you know? Like, so what if he's dead? It doesn't matter, you know? It's like, um, because it's Shepard's mentor, pretty much, you know? He was your bro yeah. for the longest time. He was, like, your first bro. <laughs> he was, like, a father figure to an extent. Yeah, so that would have been pretty cool. But, yeah, super awesome if they did, like, Garrus or your, or your romance. That would have been cool. Which Garrus, you know, I understand if Garrus is your romance, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. no yeah totally here I'm, here I'm saying actually that like Sylvester folks he said I just didn't understand why did Sovereign need Saren to open the Citadel arms <laughs> if the AI child was there in the entire game that's that's exactly like that's exactly my point like Mass Effect 3 <clears throat> literally took what you made in the two games and just like literally threw it out <laughs> like okay yeah. I saved Ashley let's say I saved Ashley in Mass Effect 3 if I don't do things right well she'll die again um, I put Anderson as member of the, of the council. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. The council and, oh, Mass Effect 3, it's Udina. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, like, that's true. Yeah. So, it, it doesn't make that much sense. And I, I saw the other day, like, I think I was talking like a documentary on it, something like that. Mm -hmm. And Mass Effect 3, apparently like it had, it's not as bad as Andromeda was, but it had a very similar kind of like a, like issue, like time issue, mm -hmm. like trying to make that game. So yeah, there's yeah. a lot of things that ended up being cut out. Like, for example, dude, the From Ashes DLC. That was supposed to be in the main game, and they yeah. ended up releasing it as a DLC. Like, it was yep. it was a good attempt at a half-assed game, but they just ruined it at the end, yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, there were a lot of, uh, like, great moments in Mass Effect 3. Like, I, from my experience overall with Mass Effect 3 was great. It's just the last 5% is what really um, dug its grave, unfortunately. And there are some people that don't understand. It's like, oh, you're focusing on the 5%. It's and not the 95% of it being good. I'm like, you're like, bro, this ending, it was to the entire trilogy. It fucking destroyed it. <laughs> it threw everything you did out the fucking window. And people don't see it like that. They don't see how much they've been bamboozled or cheated or, like, gut punched. Like It's like, do you not realize that... I mean, f for example, uh, talk about another decision, like... Uh, we'll actually get to the original storyline for Mass Effect 3 in a second here. Uh, saving the Rachni Queen, right? You see her, you save her in the first one, you see her in the third game. Okay, cool. That was I. That was great because that's what I did. You kill her in the first game, and then there's someone else in the third game as the Rachni Queen. So it's like 95% um, of it's good. Like um, there's some continuity issues there, and I had someone comment about that. It's like, yeah, why was the Rachni Queen alive when you kill her in the first game? So yeah, there's. Plenty of stuff like that in Mass Effect 3 that didn't make sense. And, um, and, but some of the other stuff made sense, you know, uh, when, if you don't have Rex with you, because you could kill him in the first game, it's cool to see a different, like, Erdnot, uh, clan leader in the second game, and, I, and you see him in the third game, but I think he doesn't survive or something like that. I'm trying to remember. But, um, you know, this is, uh, it's just, this is so much. It's like sensory overload. Nah. <laughs> um, it's just, it's just crazy that they, it probably, most likely EA had a lot to do with it because it definitely rushed them with Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 and Dragon Age 2 were definitely a part of that development health cycle. And if Mass Effect 3 didn't have the MacGuffin cliche, like, you know, this weapon to end all things, destroy the bad guy, you know, easy button route. Um, the original story for Mass Effect 3 was going to be really, really cool. And I, I'm pretty sure we talked about that too. It had to do with all the dark energy, weird activities happening at the outside of the galaxy, you know, like why are in the galaxy, why are stars just getting their life sucked out of them? That was never talked about in the third game. It was just hinted at in the second game. So, um, just imagine if they went that entire route with the original story of Mass Effect 3. Oh my god. You can read all about it, people. It's on the internet. You can look up the original story for Mass Effect 3, and it's it's pretty astounding at what the direction they were going with. Um, have you read it, Saint, at all? Honestly, no. But, like, now I'm interested about it. <laughs> now I kind of want to read it, too. Because, yeah, it's it's that. Like, I, I have heard that, like, they did have, like, you know, development issues. And I think it shows in certain aspects. Like, I think they pulled it off, like, good enough for you to say, like, oh, this was totally planned. But there are certain things that you're like, mm, I mean... Yeah, like it, the whole Rachni thing. Mm. Like, yeah, Rachni thing. Like, there's a bunch of decisions that you can tell that, like... Yeah, what you said, it doesn't have continuity. Like, you don't feel like you're going forward. You feel like mo a lot of your decisions that you, you know, made in the past... Yeah. don't really matter they're just putting kind of like the same thing they did with the fil with the filter <laughs> with the ending like they're putting a different filter on it but they're not really changing anything significant no no it's just like an expansion of what we've already seen it's like well or like then they're done that or like miranda for example i have a huge issue with miranda i love Miranda as a character yeah she's uh, she's, great. she's a bitch in the <laughs> in the first uh in mass effect 2 yeah yeah but like then you kind of like get like kind of you know closer and like it's it's a character that you're used to seeing during the entirety of a game yeah right and she was completely cast aside like just completely like you you could barely see her you only have like that mission with her sister and the thing but she's completely cast aside in mass effect 3 even though you spent the same amount of time with her in mass effect 2 yeah. as with the other characters in mass effect 1 yeah. So it's. I agree. Y you can, yeah, you can kind of tell that they were, they were kind of prioritize prioritizing here. Like they were saying, like, okay, this is more popular, so let's go with this. We don't have time to put this, so let's leave this aside. Mm. Like they were kind of prioritizing, that, and I can tell it's a little rushed. And oh, I would sure. have to agree with, I would have to agree with what Sylvester said. Like, dude, it's like, why, 
why make the child part of the game? Like, there are so many things that don't make any sense. Like, oh, out of nowhere, now there's this huge Prothean <laughs> device thing that we didn't discover when we were in the actual Prothean planet on Ilos. And oh, look, it just randomly appears in Mass Effect 3. How convenient. Yeah. Oh, now there's this big bad guy called Kai Lang. And oh, wow, he's a ninja Asian thing. Because I think he yeah. was Asian. Like, it, it, it's... Uh, like it, it it adds so many things that like just don't make sense or at least needed a little bit more prep time like before putting them on mass effect 3 yeah um, i don't know the, Put too much thing <laughs> no you're you're right there's a lot of things that were shoehorned in there at the last second right it's just a bunch of things compiled um instead of fleshed out on a lot of things i always take it like this put quality over quantity okay i get it that it's the last game in the series there's so much stuff that they have to worry about that has to be transferred over i can get that not many games do that bioware was probably like one of the only developers that really uh tried to make that a reality like with dragon age and mass effect and it's not easy right but they did it so good for mass effect one to two which is great you know um for example, like you'll just help out, like doing normal side missions in Mass Effect One, right? And then they 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 added either a cameo appearance from the people you helped from the first game. They put them in the second game, and you have like a uh, like a conversation with them, or you get an email from them. You know, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and then so, some people you helped from the first game, you do see in the third game. Um, but like, it's. It was so it was executed so well in Mass Effect 2. Uh, I, I really appreciate that they did that that they did that. Um, and like I said, they have some they have that in three, um, but you see, there's just like there's just way too much stuff going on, and you know there's lack of direction with that. And then uh, my good friend Dre just said like he hates how the Leviathan Leviathan DLC, by the way, which is really cool, really badass, uh, very yeah. Lovecraftian, which is great. Um, expanded on the reaper lore but there's still like an unanswered question of like why are they still just destroying everything when they when they know that you know they rebelled against their makers like the geth did but they're still killing things and it's never explained and you have to yeah. find all that out behind a paywall and that's yeah. and it's like come on like seriously that's ridiculous. Now, that's why I'm glad that this Legendary Edition exists, so people can actually get a fair chance of understanding where we're coming from, and they actually get to enjoy the entirety of the trilogy with, without paywalls. Well, you know, DLC paywalls. <laughs> what if they... Yeah. What, okay, this, is, this would be fucked up. What if they added D more DLC to this trilogy, this Legendary Edition? Like, hey, That'd uh, be bullshit. <laughs> That'd be so much hey, bullshit. Guys. I'd be like, you know what? Fuck you in your game. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my god. That'd be yeah, so sorry. ridiculous. Sorry I turned off the video for a sec. I had to like charge my Mac and like the 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 case wasn't yeah. let me, you know, connect it. I don't know. Oh. I, I heard a cat <laughs> screeching a little bit. And you like threw it or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it was it was the case. I, I threw it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but yeah, like man, I, I don't know. Like there there's so many things I wish they would change. That it's not gonna happen. But right. At least an extended, extended cut, I think, would be harder. <laughs> extended <laughs> epilogue. You need an epilogue. Extended for, epilogue. Sure. Yeah, an epilogue. Okay. I think that, that's so, true. we... Okay, everybody has an idea of where we're coming from with how we feel about Mass Effect 3's ending, okay? Now, yes. here's the other side of this video. Mass Effect Andromeda. Okay. Christ. <sighs> Man. If you thought Mass Effect 3 was bad or the ending or whatever you feel about it mass effect andromeda was the bottom of the mass effect 3 barrel okay mass effect 3 uh, uh, oh god oh god it's like calling up a bible to a fucking That's vampire so oh. depressing look oh. at this shit <laughs> see this i so always sad. i always liked the cover and like the concept art they had for mass effect andromeda because i thought it was pretty cool what the direction they were going with but man yeah. when you watch that first trailer or whatever trailer that that just destroyed the internet oh my god people were just like this is terrible so let's um okay i guess this time i'll start with my experience with mass effect andromeda okay go for it so i had a plan <laughs> i had a plan to literally play this game through four times okay 
both on male writer, right? Like good and bad, which doesn't matter in the game at all. Uh, and then yep. good and bad on female writer, okay, which doesn't matter at all. And I had like like I said, I had big plans and everything. So my initial, my first impressions of Mass Effect Andromeda, I was actually having a good time. Okay, I liked how it started. I thought it was, I liked the intro cutscene and stuff. It kind of gets you hyped up, shows the Nexus, and it, like, and then your big ass ship. And then 600 years later, you wake up and stuff. I thought um, pretty much all the way until you get to the the mini Citadel, you know, and you're trying to figure out what the hell happened here. Like, I always love derelict stuff like that in sci-fi where you don't know what happened. You know, it's all freaky and spooky. Okay, I thought that was cool. But once you start to get, be able to just do your own thing and go out in the world or different worlds, that's when the problem, the, the game starts to fall flat on its face. Um, I, I didn't like, um, so that's when like things started to really just be kind of boring for me. Um, I think the biggest issue I had with my experience was just the open world mechanics and if you thought Mass Effect 1's open world mechanics were boring because it's just like, yay, all these planets are kind of the same. Don't get me wrong, like the planets look really cool in Mass Effect Andromeda. I thought that was neat, like the world building was cool. But um, it was still pretty barren, you know? There's just like some things you can do here and there, but it's a lot of scanning. <laughs> a lot of fucking scanning, like I'm Batman for crying out loud. I get... I get that you're discovering all this new stuff, but oh my lord, all the fucking scanning. Um, uh, so, you know, I, like I said, as you go through, you just, I just cared less and less about what was going on. And then it had the same cliche plot twist. It's like, oh, the cat used to be this race, this species. Wow. That sounds familiar. Sounds like a plot twist in Mass Effect 2. Like the collectors used to be Protheans, which was cool. But then it's like, oh, the cat, a villain that nobody really, I don't know, they and then you figure out no that one you cares about, dude. <laughs> and you're just like, great. Um, oh, look, here's me making decisions that don't matter. It's like because they all mean the same fucking thing. They have the same outcome. <laughs> because guess what? They took away Renegade and Paragon decisions. It's just all neutral <laughs> or whatever. And guess what? You know how many times I was trying to be nice to like um, that Scottish chick who's um, who's gay in the game, which... Suvi. Suvi. I, you know, I loved her accent. I liked how she looked. I was, you know, I was male writer. I was trying to, you know, lay the, lay the Mac, like, you know, good old smooth talking. But then I pick a decision and it shows me, like, hitting on her, like, all creepy-like. I'm like, whoa, whoa. I wasn't trying to go that hard in the paint and it just creeps out the character. I'm like, what's up with that, you know? So there's a lot of stuff yeah. like that that I didn't appreciate where the decisions are kind of, like, really extra when you're not trying to be and they're not really self-explanatory they're not clear and they usually have the, they always had the same outcome you're like what's the fucking point it's like who is this the archon what's his beef like who cares um <laughs> you know he's like i'm generic villain a cool great I'm generic <laughs> oh hey okay. look at this remnant tech what where did it all come from oh guess we'll never know yeah. ah who's yeah. the mysterious benefactor oh guess we'll never know <laughs> It's Where's the Korean arc? Yeah, it's supposed to be... Alright, it's okay, guys. You just get it as a book, and then you'll get it as non-DLC or some shit like that. So, but that was that's like post-thoughts. Um, and then I didn't like my crew, really. Uh, my cr The only crew members I really liked was um, Vetra, because I think a female Turian is pretty badass. She was pretty cool in the game. And then, um, God, I don't even remember the fucking... The, the Krogan, the really old fucking Krogan. He was pretty cool, too. Um, but it's like, my only option... Wh what is the only, like, straight option I can make as a straight writer? I think it was just Korra. Korra, yeah. Or was it Vetra, too? I think... No, Vet Vetra... I'm pretty sure Vetra was... Give me a sec. I I'm gonna investigate <laughs> So, this. the only option I had was Korra. And it's like, okay, I guess Korra's kind of cool, but I'm not into her hairstyle, because that's just not me, you know? I like... Yep, I Vetra's I bi. Okay, okay, bisexual. There's only one straight character, which is fine, whatever. But, like, Suvi, you know, it's like, hey, how you doing? But, you know, there was too many, like... Uh, I don't know. There wasn't many straight people for Nico. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
But anyway, uh, and then you get to... Oh my god. How does the game even end? I don't remember how it ends. Isn't that sad? Um, I don't remember how it ends. Don't you just fly <laughs> away and... You, you go to like... There was like this planet, like this kind of like <laughs> ideal planet that you were supposed to go oh, to. I think right. you go there Habitat and then like six you or choose seven, whatever it's called. something like that. And you choose between like one, like literally the same ending as Mass Effect 1. You choose between one leader or the other. Yeah. It's literally the same one. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember that. I think um, it was like you have to choose between the, dude, I hate that. I hated that. Solarian. He was a, he was a dick. He looks like a pro. I hate Solarians, dude. They're so. That's that's just me ranting that's, about Solarians. Well, hey, don't worry. <laughs> my my good friend Dre in the chat hates Morton Solus. He always kills him in Mass Effect Three. Oh my god! <laughs> Shoots him in the fucking back. It's so sad though if you actually do that. But, oh my god! But, that's, oh. <laughs> it's funny as hell though. So, um, yeah, there's there's just more unlikable characters in that game. Um, I don't know. It, it's been a while since I played, but that's got to mean something. If I haven't played Mass Effect Andromeda in a while, and I played more of Mass Effect Trilogy, you know, and it's been it's been out since 2007. That's like that means a lot to me. And remember how I had that those goals in mind of playing it like four different times? Yeah, I only played it one and a half times, and I never played it again. I was done. I, I just couldn't do it. It was just. Too much monotonous bullshit in the open world mechanics. The story was, eh. Um, the this is when the facial animations were like really bad. My face is tired. Yeah, my face is tired. Like it was just a jumbled mess. People were like, well, with the updates and like all this and that. Yeah, because the updates are gonna fix a mediocre storyline, and people you don't give a fuck about. Yeah, that's gonna make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, I totally. Yeah. The voice acting was good in that game, though. I will give them that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mm, I'd say the voice. Yeah, I'd say the voice acting was good. My problem was with what they did with that voice acting. Like, I believe there was a lot of talent, but they didn't give them the tools they needed to like really make that talent evident. PB oh. was really well like voice acted, but her story, like her as a character, she's the most uninteresting. She she's so shallow. No one gives a fuck about her. Oh like, my I god! Her I forgot of, like, about her. Jesus. God. I hated PB. And the most interesting one, which was like the medbay doctor. I, I don't know. Dr. Something. Dr. Asari. <laughs> Dr. Asari. Yeah, she's Dr. Asari. She was the most, she's probably the, like easily like the most interesting female yeah. character yeah. like in, in the game. And she's not romanceable. Oh, Ooh, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> I was my... like, well, I don't fuck. You know what? Bioware knows how to blue balls me with with a sorry characters I want to romance. Like I always want to romance Samara, even though she's like eight hundred years old. I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. You know what? I don't care. I'll. Uh, a, a, what about Arya? Uh, Arya, even I mean, holy shit, hell yeah! She's like she's a great yes. fucking character. Um, and she get and you get to do and see this is what's great about Mass Effect Three. The Omega DLC was fantastic. You get to do entire DLC and she's on your team, which I thought was great. Um, that shit was awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Mass Effect and Drama, there was, like I said, everything was going well for me from from the beginning to uh, when you get to the, the, the Nexus, whatever it's fucking called, the Mini Citadel, pretty much. Um, uh, I, I, I will admit, there was some decisions that did matter because you do get, like, interviewed and you do talk to bystanders in that Mini Citadel, and you get to see them later on and stuff and they kind of like uh expand on their dialogue i guess there's little mini storylines i thought that was kind of neat um but you know it's all surface level you know it's not really the there's so much better they could have done uh i i always appreciate the banter between your squad mates like on your ship and stuff they, they always do a good job with that um but it's Here's another thing was like male was writer even a likable character like I don't even think they even hold a hold a fucking candle or whatever whatever you want to call it anything to uh, Shepard okay like not even close now I get that Shepard is like oh I'm already N seven I'm already kind of a badass you know I'm this heroic guy already and you kind of just 
choose their psychological history already. You know, it's kind of the work's already done for you. And then in drama, it's like, hey, I'm a little peon. I was Citadel security. <laughs> now I'm a now I'm a Pathfinder. And uh, my dad dies in like the first mission in the game. That was cool. <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, and that that voice actor is so iconic too for Alec Ryder. Um, the another cool thing. Okay, an, uh, I'm gonna be honest. Another cool thing that they did was depending on how you made female and male uh, writer look, your dad kind of reflects on uh his face looks like a hybrid yeah. or like a mix or something of how you yeah. made your characters and but don't even get me started on the character customization in that game it was terrible it was absolutely terrible all my characters looked awful that i tried to make from scratch i was like you know what fuck this i'm just gonna go with default um and i thought it was bad for me in the original trilogy because every time i make a character in the original trilogy there was always like something off about them and i'm like all right just gonna go with default this and that but I had better, I, I just felt like I had more options. Uh, there was, I guess it was more um, detailed or something. I don't know. It just looked cooler in the original trilogy when you're customizing your character compared to Andromeda. It was just very bland. Yeah, that's true. Like, hmm. Man, I, uh, there's so many things on my side. That All right, like, let's hear I, it. I I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Oh, real quick. Um, uh, Dre says yeah. the bullet in Morden Solis's back is tired. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god. The default oh, male writer looked <laughs> awful. He looked like an indie game developer. That's fucking funny. <laughs> I honestly, I don't think that the default male writer was bad. I thought the default female writer was bad. And like they, like they're supposed to be siblings. They don't even look like remotely alike. Like, oh, true. They're supposed to be like, okay, biological siblings, right? They're not supposed to be like adopted siblings. That's another topic. But, yeah. like, they they look, they look don't even look alike. Like, Sarah looks super ugly. Like, she is a ugly character. Okay. Yeah. And, her like, when you try to customize pretty tired it, too. Yeah, her face looks pretty tired too. And, like, she doesn't even look remotely like, uh, like, male writer. Like, male writer looks like, I think he looks, he looks, you know, he looks a, like a good looking dude, like in comparison to his ugly ass sister. Like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, but like, that's awesome, you could, though. you could like barely tell that they're like biologically like similar, which I think it kind of like destroys a little bit the, you know, uh, you, you like know, it's, you know, yeah. you know, what's funny. It's like, it's, it's like watching, um, like a TV show when they have siblings and they look nothing alike. It's like that in Andromeda. Like an example is like Supernatural, like Sam and Dean don't look anything alike. <laughs> but yeah. they're brothers. They're just like white. Yeah, they're, they're just, just white. Just a couple That's white it. guys. But they're you know brothers. But so it's like that in Andromeda where the siblings don't look anything alike. Which is weird. See, yeah. see, people. Yeah, and there was there's so many things I disliked about that game. Like, and the ironic part is that I don't think the game was terrible. I just think it was mediocre. Like, I think there are games that are a lot worse. Oh, for get a sure. Lot less shit for it than what Andromeda got. But have you like in terms of what? Oh, uh, real quick, have you played the fucking campaign for Star Wars Battlefront Two? Um, I don't. I don't like. I'm not a Star Wars fan, so like when I saw it was, no, I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> that, you know what? After seeing all the stuff about that game, like you're in the right place. <laughs> um, that story was just absolutely terrible, and like I'd rather be playing Andromeda than that story. And the campaign was only four hours long too good times exactly like there, there's a lot worse games out there than than something like mass effect but well andromeda but dude there's there is so many things wrong with that game i mean i completely agree with you with the fact that i did not give a flying fuck about like the vast majority of the characters on my team like yeah. dude i didn't care about cora i didn't i barely cared about pb i just cared about pb because sorry and it's the go-to plan let's go for the asari but yeah, like suvi too exactly suvi like it was kind of like an like even though she was an interesting character the romantic option was super uninteresting uh this other dude was nice but he was gay so like that kind of didn't apply to me uh oh right right he was like the engineer vetra guy. yeah v vetra like okay like i like turians but like not to get my character to sleep with them like they look like reptiles so i kind of like no yeah but unless it's garris yeah, he's like, like the only exception i'd ever bang it yeah I, yeah because like it, it's garris <laughs> you'd all bang garris yeah but... he'll let, i'll let him calibrate <laughs> on me any day <laughs> <laughs> but like 
it's it's precisely that. And I don't necessarily think that the straight options were that much of an issue because if you look at something like Dragon Age Inquisition, yeah. like they didn't have a lot of completely straight options either. Like yeah. it was just Cassandra. She was the only one. I, and I, no one had an issue with right. this romance. You know what? I think my main issue was, I'm just going to rebuttal, is that my only straight option was Korra and she's pretty ugly. <laughs> I think that's why I was so that's upset. That's my issue. <laughs> like, even though, like, it probably sounds cruel to some people, people are going to be like, oh, my God, I'd, why are you, like, ugly shaming someone? Whatever. Like, it's it's a hard truth, okay? When we play a game, we don't want to be with the with the ugly duck, okay? We want to be with the pretty people. With yeah, the, it's called standards. Like, it's called... <laughs> <laughs> people have standards. It's called leaving the bar decent, okay? It's having a yeah. decent bar. No, yeah. but, like... Like you, you don't you don't play a game like that for hours to to end up with with ugly Betty. Like you, you don't you don't no, do that. Like no. you, you play it to have the attractive people, and all these people on top of the fact that their face was in general like robotic when they spoke because of the animations. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, they were so uninteresting. Cora like always acted like she had a stick up her ass. Um, she, Subi she was a little too passive. PB was uninteresting. I think Vetra was yeah, Vetra was probably the only interesting one, and the and old the old Krogan because he he was fucking awesome. I wouldn't want to romance him, but he was like the garish bro. Yeah, of he, yeah, he was great. <laughs> uh, I think his name was Drax or Drac or yeah, something. Yeah, it's Drac. It's Drac. Yeah. So and what? Uh, and then see, we're forgetting one ter- the worst fucking Mass Effect companion of all time, Liam. Liam. <laughs> the only interesting thing about that guy is that he was. <laughs> that was probably that's, I think he made him British just to like kind of like make a point like oh look we have a British guy oh, here, here's some variety <laughs> I, I knew when he waves at you in the beginning of Andromeda I knew was, he's gonna be trouble he's like let's buy a couch right there let's his his uh his his companion his loyalty oh, mission was fun though that was because it was showing some humor on the on the Mass Effect humor yeah. side of things it was pretty cool but that was about it I didn't really give a fuck about him I never wanted to use him he was just Even, so yeah. bland. So fucking bland. And, um, like, there's there's this guy. Like, was, yeah, I think he was a variety pick. He was like my kite. He was like my Kate Malenko. <laughs> he was my Kate Malenko. Worst part is, like, now that I look at, like, Mass Effect 3 and I look at Kaden, Kaden is a much more interesting character than Ashley. I think I just chose Ashley because it was Ashley. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, in, like, in the beginning. Kaden has a character yeah yeah exactly later yeah. becomes more interesting in the beginning yeah he was just he, he was another guy that like he had to stick up his ass and it was kind of annoying he was like you know what die but <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah. like man like there's in the angara like <sighs> yeah you're the I, angaran guy you could you can have the angaran guy i don't remember jaw yeah i think was the name it, yeah like he like he's not terrible but like i definitely don't feel any sort of way towards him i think it's just interesting because it's new like yeah, he's he's, he's, he's every like, he's every like hentai fan's uh, wet dream. <laughs> yeah, I honestly he's a, he's yes. A tentacle guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's a tentacle guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, overall feel about Andromeda, just eh. Just, mm. kind, of, just kind of meh. I'd say yeah, I'd say it's it's a big meh. It was like, it was a big meh disappointment because it definitely wasn't worth the wait at all. And besides, they're used, they're so insistent on using frostbite. Frostbite, like okay, <sighs> Inquisition did it right. Inquisition did it right, but yeah, dude, frostbite is it's not made for RPGs, dude. It's just not it's like make shooters. another one. It's made for shooters, dude. And look at the fact, Andromeda was a great shooter. <laughs> like it was yeah. awesome to shoot in Andromeda, yeah. but the rest of the game was fucked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my so, god. Um, same uh, thing with Anthem. Anthem was a shooter, but that was just bad yeah, it was, because. It's just bad, you know. It's just bad. I think, yeah, I think they should probably get together like the people that made Inquisition, because I think, even though people some have their some people have their issues with Inquisition, I think it was as an RPG a really good, one. hey, like, story wise. Yeah, here's really the thing, good. Inquisition got Game of the Year. You know what game didn't? Andromeda. Whoa. <laughs> I had the game of the. I have the game of the year. Yeah, the game of the Inquisition is a lot of fun, although you know. They could have made it a lot smaller, the open world stuff, because it's like running around. Yeah, that's Inquisition storyline is so fucking great. Oh my gosh! Um, the characters, dude, you care about every single one in a different oh, way. Like, yeah, that's, that's yeah, it. like, exactly. dude, you didn't get that on Andromeda. You didn't. I didn't give a crap about any of those characters. <laughs> yeah. God. So, like you died. Oops. 
Yeah, pretty much. Oh, wait, I didn't. I wasn't trying to hit on the P- Phoebe or PB. Oh, oh, Male fuck. writer just being a fucking creep to the lesbian yeah, Susie. Nice I felt, one. <laughs> I felt really awkward. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, oh, those options. Yeah. Um, they were like, oh, want to be creepy or want to be super creepy? Like, those were the options in Andromeda. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's, so now that we have our impressions of what we thought about it, now, man, we've been going for like an hour, and we haven't even discuss the main event yet <laughs> christ okay so we'll see how this goes eh, no rush right um no now we go to the main point now we have the the foundation of how we feel about it all um we're pretty much in the same boat you know we weren't satisfied with mass effect 3's ending and we weren't satisfied with andromeda as a whole now we talk about what was worse what was more polarizing for us and then for the Mass Effect community as a whole. Um, so that's this is going to be interesting. Okay. So I guess I'm going to go, just just short, short answer. I'm going to go that Andromeda was more polarizing than Mass Effect 3's ending. It was worse. Okay. As, as like, as, as in terms of like a, catacly- a cataclysmic event <laughs> for the Mass Effect yeah. community and gaming community. All the way, yeah. Mass Effect and drama. Hmm. I'd say, honestly, like, I think it was worse. Like, I think the Mass Effect 3 ending was more polarizing. Oh! Okay, okay, okay. Okay. <clears throat> so now, wow. Dang. Okay, this is going to be fun. Okay, so <laughs> let's just say this. Mass Effect and drama was so polarizing that they canceled all the DLC and they put Mass Effect on ice. Boom. That's a good point. That's a good point. But but Dre just made something really good too. Um, this isn't an easy discussion, and by all means, this is. I mean, they're both shit. Okay, they're both <laughs> shit. So it's like comparing smelly shit to smelly shit. What do you? It's like it's almost impossible. But Dre just made a good point, saying like the ending was so bad for Bioware that they ran away to another galaxy. And like that, that's, that's yeah. So true. That's, that's kind of like my point because i think that like even though like we knew that andromeda was going to be something different and that we knew that wasn't going to be mass effect the one we knew yeah. right yeah i yeah. think like like they, they did took both of them took a shit on us basically but like when we talk about like fan kind of like commitment i feel that people were a lot more committed to mass effect 3's ending and a lot more committed to the original trilogy than they were to andromeda you know because they knew that it had yeah. nothing to do with the original yeah, and here's another thing. Um, Fuck. People didn't know what to expect with Mass Effect 3, right? They thought it was... like the, the launch trailer for Mass Effect 3 was fucking epic and awesome. Nobody knew the ending was going to be shite. Nobody. Unless you played it or waited and saw it on the internet. But uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, people knew that game was going to be trouble by the trailers that they showed and... Uh, leaked footage, betas, and all this crap, whatever that they released, they, we knew ahead of time um, that the game as a whole wasn't going to be uh, what it's cracked out to be. Like People were just shitting on it so hard when it was coming to release and stuff. You know, So we, ha- we had at least a heads up. And plus, plus, um, you know what? I, th- I think I might switch sides. I think Mass Effect 3's ending was a lot more polarizing because... People had their guard up so much when Andromeda was coming out, especially when that when they were showing gameplay footage or just whatever trailer that really just set the internet on fire in the Mass Effect community. Um, that, you know, it was expected, unfortunately. With Mass Effect 3, there was so much build-up to this game because it was the final game in the trilogy. Everybody was so fucking stoked to play this game. Uh, it's, you know, obviously if you're a Mass Effect fan, um, and then you just get so, you, you get like your blue ball so hard at the end and then you get, and they get cut off. Your balls get chopped off and you're just like, <sighs> what a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I, I don't say, yeah, I have to agree with that. Cause like, that's the thing. Like, for example, yes, Andromeda sucked. And yes, there are people that like as your friend said like i just saw on the stream that he said that um that what like 
that a lot of more a lot more people defend Mass Effect 3's ending than Andromeda's. But the thing is that like But they defend it in the wrong way though. They defend yeah. it like saying it was good and they don't understand or we need to get over it. I'm like, yeah, I understand. I, I even said that, yeah, we should get over it as best we can and, you know, let the past be the past. But it's really hard when Mass Effect is, you're going to have to deal with Mass Effect 3 in a few months from now. So it kind of just, you know, it's a vicious kinda cycle. It's kind of hard to like leave it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to leave it behind when you're going to get a month. Yeah. So... <sighs> Like, Andromeda was bad. Andromeda was shitty. It did not have an interesting story, blah, blah, blah. Yes, but I think more people, like, you can't tell me that someone is going to be equally as committed to a new entry that it has nothing to do with the original one than to two entire games and the final entry of that trilogy. You know, like, this is almost like a new IP. Almost. Yeah. Like, it's it's Mass Effect. Yes, it's in the universe, but, like, it's something that no one knows about, no one cares about, no one has built, like, a sort of loyalty or relationship with the characters, anything like that. So, people objectively are going to be mad, but they won't feel... They won't feel it, you know? Like, they won't feel as affected by it as with Mass Effect 3. Because I played in... I, you saw my deluxe edition? That's sad as hell. Yeah. And I'm, like, even though, like, I'm like, yeah, it was a shitty game, I definitely strongly about as i would feel for something like the mass effect 3 ending where they made Mm -hmm. me spend hours and hours of my life for a instagram filter ending so mm, i'd say it's more i'd say the mass effect 3 ending is more polarizing for yeah you here's the thing you start from 2007 if you're like me and then you get to 2012 all that weight of you know when all the games come out and then it's just like you know it all builds up to this final epic installment. And for the most part, it was pretty epic. There was a lot of great stuff about it. That I, there was some great set pieces in Mass Effect 3. It was a lot of great moments. The music, uh, Jesus. Yeah, the That's music amazing. is amazing in that fucking game. Like the uh, Leaving Earth music, and you see the mm-hmm. ships getting destroyed by the Reapers. That's fucking heartfelt. Uh, that's, that is heart-wrenching. And even me just talking about it, I'm like, man, that is some fucking dark shit right there. And, like, the Reapers just fuck shit up from the get-go in the game. It just doesn't pull any punches, which I thought was a great way to introduce them. Um, and then it's like, when you get to Andromeda, it's like, you're like, oh, uh, cool. I guess I'm doing this now. Like, you don't really feel that same impact. Not even close. I get it, Andromeda is the start of its own series and stuff. But it, hear me out, when I was playing Mass Effect 1, there were some pretty fucking heartfelt moments in that game, too. Like, shit. Yeah. Like, when Shepard rises from the ashes and goes on the, like, Pride Rock monument, like, Reaper, like, uh, monument, and he survives and stuff and plays the epic theme, I was like, oh, my God! <laughs> you know, it was, like, yeah. fangirling so hard. Um, yeah, there's no moments like that in Andromeda. But Mass Effect 3, you know, you just felt cheated. You felt like you've been betrayed. And nothing hurts more than being betrayed and, like, like... There's, it's one thing to stick a knife in someone's back, right? But it's also another th- It's another thing to stick a knife in someone's back and then you twist it. That's fucked up. Yeah. And I feel like uh, Bioware really shit the bed with that one. And we just... Nobody knew. Nobody fucking knew this was going to happen. Now, even as, as I'm older, you know, I can tolerate the extended cut ending and stuff. I can, I can go back and play it for what it is, right? I can go back and do that. I don't want to play Andromeda at all. <laughs> you know? It's yeah. not, it sounds like I'm going back to the Andromeda side. That was more polar. No, but... Um, because like I said, Mass Effect 3, um, the majority of it is a pretty solid game. There's just continuity issues, and then the ending was just the, uh, the nail in the coffin for sure. It's just, yeah, like... It's just sad, man. It's 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 honestly like it's it's as simple as like if you put a picture of an ex Andromeda here and you put a picture of the next trilogy game here like with Liara like the literally the Mass Effect Legendary Edition right if you put that side to side dude Andromeda is gonna go like go fuck itself like no one cares about it like people are just gonna be more excited like people are more excited I believe for the Legendary Edition than for even though they know the ending sucks. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, the yeah, I, I have to say Mass Effect. I, I say I say Mass Effect Three is is the worst hit to the community, Re- and obviously regarding gameplay wise and actual game, yeah, Andromeda fucking takes the cake. I think um, 
Yeah, but it was the uh, if people thought Dragon Age Two was bad, you know, at least Dragon Age Two. Uh, you know what, Dragon Age Two at least like I I did have an enjoyable time, you know, despite its linearity and you know it was nowhere. I even, liked it. It was nowhere like, even. I never played Dragon Age One, and I liked it. <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, is that if you play one and then you go to two, you're like, yeah, oh. I kind of realize it after it. Like but, I played one after. But you see, that's just that's just how, how the cycle went for you. That's fine. Um, mm. I know why people didn't like two, but see, I I played two and I enjoyed for what they were trying to show. Although it was definitely way more linear with your decision making and stuff. That's Ooh, for sure. Yeah. Um, definitely a lot more railroaded for sure. Uh, it was there wasn't no like A B C D E answers. It was just A or B, <laughs> pretty yeah. much. But uh, going back to what was more polarizing, I think the majority of people are gonna say Mass Effect Three uh, deep down. Um, I don't like Andromeda. I played it. That was it. You know, uh, if an Andromeda Two, I don't have a big of fear as I do with the Mass Effect Three ending, especially with the Legendary Edition coming out. Um, but I do, ex I do expect them not to do anything like it, it, it could ease legendary edition could be easily just a re-release with just better graphics or something, or just things are just, I don't know. It's, it could be a cheap HD remaster and you know, the ending will still be there and people would just cry <laughs> like, why are you going to put me through this? Like, is this going to set the world aflame again in golf? Yeah. Like, I think who the hell is calling me? Give me a sec. Don't call me. Okay, sorry. Uh, Don't I ever think... get her number, folks. She won't answer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I think, for like, for example, that complaint that you had about like straight characters in Andromeda, I think <laughs> the inverse is true in Mass Effect Two. Dude, Mass Effect Two had no non-straight characters. All of them were straight. No non-straight characters whatsoever. I think uh, Jack. Jack, but Jack, Jack. Jack? I, I could romance. I could romance Jack as a femme shepherd. Really? I could have swore you could. None of them were, dude. And I, I like that's the thing. Like I think maybe small changes like those would really like help modernize the game because like I get that back in the day it would be like, Oh my god, oh, she's gay? Oh, <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all about lesbians. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all, you and probably like ninety five percent of all <laughs> all the male population are I'm all about thirsty. lesbians. But um, <laughs> Yeah. But, like, I think, like, something like, I don't know, maybe Jack is hot. Ah, it's the bait. Nah. She's, she's hot in know. the third game. I love her her style in the third game. I'm all about that ponytail yeah. thing. I, I'm, I'm more of a Miranda fan myself. I think Miranda's hotter. Because, um, I don't know, I just like her better. But yeah. I think Miranda should have been by. Besides, they already had, they already had, like, part of that already done. Like, like there is all, like, there is a romance option for Female Shepherd, like, recorded and everything inside the game file. They just removed it, like, in the end. Yeah. Which is kind of like, well, that kind of sucks for people that, well, are not straight and don't want to romance Jacob. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody wanted to romance Nobody Jacob. Nobody wants to romance that, but, he like, was, dude. Man, he was just, no one. he was just a token black guy like Liam was, and it's just like, they gave Oh, you had to, like, bang the secretary, which was, like, yeoman chamber or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. That was your only option. So that, that kind of sucked. I, I think small changes like that could be nice yeah. to modernize it a little bit. So, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, that makes sense. Um, oh, so, okay, so our, our, our final answer. Yeah, I'm just going back to our little, our little discussion. It's like, oh, God, it just hurts every time. <laughs> just You can't help but deep sigh every time the topic comes up. So, oh, my God, yeah. Um, God, like I said, it's, it's like, I want to say, how about this? How about this? Would this, would this be fair? I want to say both games were equally po polarizing, I, like in their own way. Right. But I feel like they both, they, the ending for three and then Mass Effect Andromeda both killed Mass Effect for a very long time. You know, um, the th Three's ending was the cause, and then the effect was in drama. They were both like Bonnie and Clyde type deal. Um, yeah. Because like, because when I when I'm talking about it, like, it's, I I can't help but switch sides. I'm like, oh, but in drama, I had this that I didn't like, and that was terrible. Where it's like Mass Effect Three's ending was all about this and that. So it's it's really like it's like 
it's like a balanced scale. <laughs> I'd say I'd say it it depends on what specifically you find polarizing. Like I think it's like it depends what category polarizing right. are we talking about because. I'd say yes, there were both polarizing in their own way, but I believe Mass Effect was polarizing as in a general series, general Mass Effect way that you would say like, wow, they really just yeah. fucked us up the ass. I can't. And, yeah, yeah. Andromeda was just like, dude, they literally just made a shitty game and put Mass Effect on it, which is insulting in its own way. <laughs> right. You know what? That's that's a good point. Andromeda was just a shitty game. And then... Um... It, it, it's like you knew what, like I, I as I mentioned before you just knew what you're kind of getting into already so you had an idea that it was going to be a meh kind of game right and you just got to be mm-hmm. cautiously optimistic yeah Mass Effect 3 you just had no idea no fucking idea they um, that it was going to end that way it was going to end that <laughs> way and that's like I said that's that to me is betrayal like the knife in the back and twisted by the stupid star child you just n- had no fucking clue the Star think, Child is like, it, it it's what? like the prime, like I think the Star Child itself was cool if they executed it poorly, cause or better because I thought it was kind of neat to hear, like the music was really cool, the setup was awesome, was like going up the lift and everything, and just like oh Star Child's diamond, what the fuck, it was just executed poorly, because obviously you can make anything work in a game as long as you're smart about it. Um, uh, with that said, uh, they, um, God, that kid is literally the allegory of, <laughs> literally an allegory or just a staple of what not to do. The embodiment of what not to do for an ending to a, to a trilogy like that. You just, just imagine, do you like Lord of the Rings at all? Uh, I've seen the movies, honestly. Okay. And they're good, but like, so, I'm a big fan. Uh, okay, I'm going to do this for my sake. I, I can't imagine if I enjoyed all of the Lord of the Rings films, because they're like my favorite movies of all time. I can't imagine if it all works, you know, all the movies are great, and then you get to the ending of the third movie, and it's just dog shit. And you're just like, oh, man, this really Oops. <laughs> this really sucks. You know, it it's because yeah. you get so involved and in, in, in touch with these, with these games. And, like, people don't understand like uh gamers that had never played mass effect or just didn't like it they still have you gotta see like where we're coming from like this trilogy really affected a lot of people like it touched people uh in a good way wink wink and just <laughs> and, and, and fucking waking off to a liara like yeah of, like, see oh. <laughs> or uh miranda's assless chaps uh mod or something. yeah <laughs> it's funny as fuck so you know, and there's so many like tear jerking moments. See what I did there? Uh, so many tear jerking moments in Mass Effect trilogy, and then it's just ah, it's just all thrown into the fucking gutter in the end. The gutter of yeah. of waste, just waste of time, pretty much. I think that's I think that's what people really were mad about. It wasn't the fact. It wasn't only the fact that people were upset of how it ended in terms of story progression and stuff. I think they were just mad because it was a waste of time. I think that's yeah definitely i'd say mass effect 3 the ending at least it touched you in an emotional way like as in you feeling bad about it andromeda just plain out disrespected the just disrespected the player just like straight out disrespected them so it's a different kind of of polarizing i'd say yeah. it's it's a little different because i i honestly didn't feel betrayed with andromeda i feel i felt ripped off but definitely not betrayed <laughs> yeah there's a difference like you, we were sold a shitty game. You know, we were told that this game was going to be great, you know, but we were haggled or we were, we were, mm-hmm. uh, swindled. <laughs> bamboozled. And yeah. quite pass- possibly bamboozled. <laughs> yeah. Bamboozled and swindled, you know, it was like, Hey, play our game. It's going to be great. I I mean, or it's like, Hey, you want to play a game of pool? Uh, I've never played. And then the guy who's never played plays and he fucking destroys you. Like, Oh my God, what the yeah. fuck? Been lied to. Um, yeah, basically. And it's the worst thing possible with Mass Effect 3 because Bioware didn't even expect that outcome, that outcry or outroar from the populace. Like and they, they don't talk about it. They, they don't, don't talk they about just, it. They just left it as it was. I'm like, you, you bitch. Like, you're seeing that people are mad about it. Talk about it. It's not at least Bethesda had like the balls to be like, yeah, Fallout 75, 75 76 kind of sucked. 
<laughs> yeah, Sorry. yeah. Like Todd Howard. Well, I don't like Todd Howard at all because he's. But he at least talk, talked yeah, about it. Yeah, he at least like, makes at fun least. of it and stuff. Yeah. yeah, he's aware that people did not like it at all. And I'm sure when he was doing his speeches and stuff, he's like, oh boy, this is going to be bad. Because <laughs> he's basically like the poster boy or the speaker, pretty much, um, yeah. when it comes to that stuff. So, yeah, like. I remember hearing the interviews about Casey Hudson just not understanding why people just were so upset and just like, okay, we're going to do this extended cut. Like, they were on the fence about it, you know. But power of the people. They put in some effort. Whether you think it was good enough or not, it's it's better than nothing, I guess. Um, yeah, they, they probably did that just, like, to calm down, like, the people rather than because they understood what actually bothered them. Just kind of, like, to get it over with. I probably think they did the extended cut. Just like, okay, all these people are bitching about this. Let's just release something and we're done with them. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. And you know what? With the, the ending for Mass Effect 3, it's all about this, like, people bring up the Jesus story and stuff. I'm like, okay, well, you know, Jesus got, like, a really cool epilogue because he came back, right? And he actually had an entire, you know, thing about that where it lasts longer than a... <gasps> that goes to credits, you know? Oh my god, yeah. Like, it's like Shepard had the uh, the bad ending Jesus story where Jesus comes back. Or, you know, like, if Jesus just did <gasps> the thing in his, in his coffin and it ended right there, it'd be like, oh, okay, what's the point of that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> But no, he came back for a while and it started started talking to all the apostles and stuff. Not to get all religious and stuff. But you know, that was a proper Jesus story ending of, of fucking course. But Shepard didn't have a proper Jesus ending story at all. Uh, yeah, there was no epilogue. Oh, I just I just I solved my own problem. It'd be cool <laughs> if the Legendary problem. Edition had an epilogue. Okay, so before we wrap things up, uh, so... I think the Mass Effect 3's ending is more polarizing than Andromeda, although I think they're really close to one another in, in the polarizing department, or the, the, the shit fest, the shit storm. But, yeah. like you said, uh, Andromeda was just a bad product um, that didn't, that you just, you know, like, okay, this is, this is I, I guess. Um, but 3 was a knife in the back that was turned into a twist, twisted knife. Knife stab in the back. Whew. Terrible. Christ. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so any uh, any final things you wanted to say before we uh, end the end the good old stream? Uh no, other than just man, I really hope they fix something in that. Like I like the thing is that again, this all eventually will come back to the legendary edition, like Oh yeah, uh, I, I tell man. people that we're gonna ride this fucking legendary edition train all the way till release, and then so on and so forth. Because like, yeah, Mass Effect is gonna be talked about pretty much every day and t for a long, long time. Um, so, oh, gosh, just imagine being Casey Hudson and sitting at the table discussing the legendary edition. And be like, okay, guys, like, what's wrong? <laughs> do, do we uh, do we do something with this ending? Like, what, what's going on? Like, imagine just oof. Imagine the death threats that are gonna come at them if they didn't if they didn't do anything to kind of remedy the threes ending situation. Oh boy. Oh, it's what your it's what your pal literally said. Like, legendary edition is just going to be shoot on a on a turd. Yeah, like you can <laughs> you can you can polish a turd, but it's still a piece of shit. So unless <laughs> like unless you do something about that, honestly, I think this legendary edition is gonna reopen. Yeah. And no one's gonna want that. So let, I don't know. Let's hope they do something about that because it's bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, and if you want to hear all all about that and how you feel about Legendary Edition and Mass Effect 4 and the future of Mass Effect or Mass Effect just 101, uh, you can check out our first collab together. It was the latest Nico Show episode, and that was a ton of fun. And we had that was a great discussion. That was a lot of fun. This one was a great discussion. Um, so uh, we'll wrap it up. St. Wolven, how, where can everybody find you? What are your outlets here? You guys can find me on YouTube. You guys can find me on Twitch. You guys Twitter, you got Instagram, basically everywhere except Facebook because no one uses that shit anymore. Yeah. Um, and it's all the same name. It's all Saint Woven. I like keeping it simple, so just go ahead and give me a follow there if you like gaming news and shit like that. Yeah, I check her out too. Um, well, I'm kind of checking her out right now on the webcam, but uh, uh I mean her channel. Christ. That was was that good creepy writer. 
that was a male writer like <laughs> moment like uh, uh, I, I was watching you and uh i like your hair and uh, <laughs> yeah you know what's God. funny every time you talk to suvia and drama you're always behind her too and you're like well i guess i'm fucked already <laughs> I'm like, Hi, I'm like oh yeah so um you'll see the links to her youtube channel and stuff down below uh whenever this video goes uh gets published properly and then saint is always a pleasure to have you of course and thanks for discussing this i think this was fun to do and there's gonna be more there's always gonna be more discussions about mass effect because uh you know there's so many things you can discuss with this franchise that's see in conclusion we all want the same we, we all want the same good feels with Mass Effect. We all want it to survive and not um, go through the shit, the shit storm that it did before in 2012 and 2017. We don't want that. We want Mass Effect to stay alive and, you know, at least get majority of a good ending in terms of just Bioware making these games. We just want it to succeed and uh, we want to relive those moments. And we're going to be able to do that not too far from now. Woo! And then... uh you know, there's going to be plenty of wet t-shirt contests on, on my Mass Effect stream, so we'll get to see that for sure. Oh, wait, that was supposed to be like after our talk. Uh-oh. <laughs> this isn't Pornhub? Oh, shit, this whole time. <laughs> no one knew about the wet t-shirt. The wet writer. I'm getting some male writer. I'm getting some male writer vibes from you right now. Yeah, it's like, oh, is anybody named Thuvi in the chat? Oh. <laughs> anybody named Thuvi or Cora in the chat? If your name's Cora, please leave. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that was fun thanks again saint and everybody else have a good night i'm actually going to be streaming a game here pretty soon on twitch but not youtube because i'm going to get youtube a break but uh thanks again saint appreciate you being here same to you see you guys bye